What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Ryan Moody, Jimmy Smith, our MMA show, here to talk about UFC 247. John Jones, Dominic Reyes, will start in the heavyweight division. I say that because if you're not familiar, Amir Latifi has moved up and will fight Derek Lewis. You know, I don't want to be disrespectful to Latifi, but I think he's a guy that would be best suited at this point of his career outside of the UFC. His ground game is not enough for him to be solely dependent. His power, you know, was above average at at, at 205. Uh, but now he's in a division where everyone hits hard. Uh, a lot of guys move better than him. And I don't know that he's willing to solely commit to his wrestling to win a fight. Now, the other side of it is <laughs> your opening draw here, Derek Lewis, probably not the guy you want to see. Number one, he's seen better wrestlers. I mean, he's seen D.C., He's seen harder hitters. He's seen Francis Ngannou. I'm not saying that Amir Latifi can't win this fight. I'm saying that the odds of him winning this fight on paper are very, very small. And he would have to do something extraordinary to do so. I'm not ruling that out, but it seems like when you have a fighter bump up, especially after, you know, some questionable performances, it seems like he's doing it because he has to rather than he wants to. And this is not the guy that you want to go up and try to stake your claim against in Derek Lewis. Yeah, I mean, the issue for me is this is a guy at 205. One of his only advantages, and he wasn't a standout 205er, was he was a little bit bigger. You know, he had good size for the weight class. You talked about his takedown, his ground game. The problem is he would tend to wear himself out going for takedowns. We saw it against Volkan Uzdemir. Um, there wasn't that X factor that made me think, oh, he's going to be a really competitive heavyweight. You know, um, yeah, he may have had trouble with the cutter or something like that, but I don't see that 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 reason to move up in a positive way for a positive reason. I don't see that. And also, the UFC is not doing him any favors putting him with Derek Lewis. So it's not as though we think this guy can really do something at heavyweight, so we're going to give him somebody he can shine against, because that's not happening right now either. Uh, this is a guy who got outstruck and pushed around by Volkan Uzdemir. Tough 205-pounder. Doesn't hit anywhere near as hard as Derek Lewis. So... He's had issues with guys who don't have Derek Luce's power, who aren't his size, who don't have his experience in big fights. And it's one of those things where this is a guy who has always had trouble with the, the names. He's always had trouble with anyone with, with experience who could overcome maybe his size advantage at 205. Like Ryan Bader, Jan Blahovic, Gegard Mousasi. Every, every time he's taken on a big name, Volkan Uzdemir, former uh, contender, of course, uh, he fell flat. Against Derek Lewis, if you think Volkan Uzdemir pushed you around, got you against the fence, and hit you with power shots, you wait till Derek Lewis gets his hands on you. And I haven't seen the kind of I, – I, I don't expect the kind of rejuvenation moving up to heavyweight that some fighters get moving up in weight class. I don't see that happening with Alir Latifi. I think Derek Lewis gets him probably early. Yeah, I mean, confidence is a big thing, right? I mean, if you look at confidence, you, you've got Derek Lewis, who a guy stepping up. You know, like you said, he's looked at a guy in both power and wrestling that he's fought at a higher level than Latifi is. And, and Latifi's coming up. I don't want to say it's go or go home, but we're getting to the point where, you know, the the, the fat lady's warming up to a degree. I, unless you really put on a performance, you've got to stake your claim quick. I mean, we're going to talk about Dominic Reyes at the top of the show here. But, you know, Chris Weidman was just in this very same position. You know, when they get the call up and they put the spotlight on you, this isn't a showcase fight. You guys are both veterans. You have to do something. You have to show something to prove you belong there or the exit's just a fight away. You have to prove you're a contender. That's the difference. It's not a matter of, oh, I belong in heavyweight or Chris Weidman, I belong in 205. It's, I can compete for a title at 205. If he had beat Reyes, he's right there, right? He's probably getting the shot we're talking about on Saturday. Had he defeated Reyes, but he didn't. And it's kind of back to the drawing board. It's not just, do I belong in this weight class? Is it, It's, am I a contender in this weight class? And I don't see Alir Latifi being a contender at heavyweight. I did not see him as a contender at 205. Don't think that changes. Moving up the card, we've got Dan Ige versus Bektik. Interesting fight here. Uh, you've got Ige coming off four wins in a row. Very strong wrestler. Mixes the strikes in really well. Uh, great power. I like his hooks. I really like his uppercut. Bektik, though, man, he's a guy that will exchange. Even if he might not have the power that, that Danny Gay has, uh, he does have some really good combos, especially he's got a really nice, I was going back and watching some of his fights, really nice, like, hook and straight combo. Uh, and honestly, when, when looking at that, 
I, I really think it's going to be Bektik's fight to win. I think it's going to be kind of a grindy fight, a gritty fight. I think it's going to go the distance, and I will go with Bektik in this one. You watched my video, didn't you? You... You say Some that, but I don't. I was, but you don't. You, you really, you really don't care. You just don't, and that's okay. If I did, okay. I would make it a it's point not issue to disagree between us. with you. If I did, I, I would literally <laughs> craft an argument what? against you. To make these. <laughs> it would be like I, you would be like the attorney against me in court. You would just try and take. And that's Steeler, by the way. He's right next to me. He's a little lonely. So, anyway, um, Mirzad Bektik is one of those guys I really expected a lot from early on in his career. And then lost to Darren Elkins. Then he loses to Josh Emmett. I, nothing wrong with the Josh Emmett loss. I mean, that's a guy who's who's elite at this weight class at 145. A lot of power. He just got clipped, and that's the way it goes. Darren Elkins, one of the craziest comebacks. If you've never seen it, watch it again. That fight could have been stopped three times, I'd say, before it finished. So a couple step, steps back for Bektik. But what I like about him is, as you said, his combos. His versatility, his range, he has nice footwork, works well with the feet too. Very fast feet, good at keeping guys at range. Danny Gay has the momentum. He's won four in a row, but more of a ground guy, known for his submission game. What I think, what think happens in this fight is Mursad Bektik comes in. He's lost two of his last four, two and two in his last four, went over Ricardo Lamas, uh, got Alfredo Castro, both tough fighters, but I think he fights conservatively. It kind of bit him going for broke against Josh Emmett and Darren Elkins. I think what he does is he tries to outpoint Ige, use combinations, keep him outside, use the footwork, use the feet, use the kicks, and keep a guy known for his grappling and his takedown and his submission game outside where he can't use those gifts. And I think he fights a tight, tactical, uh, technical fight, and I think that's what gets him through. Full disclosure, we were looking at the card, and Juan Adams, Justin Tapp, I'm not saying it's not you know a pay-per-view worthy fight. I was just trying to determine where placement was. I'm looking at the card. You had Diego Lima, Sean O'Malley, OSP. You've got um, Andrea Lee, first uh, fighter I ever did an interview with. Fun fact, Andrea Lee. Uh, kind of tucked away on the prelim card. I, this fight just didn't seem to fit in with the rest of the main card. So I don't know if it was there the whole time or if it just showed up there recently. Uh, but at the end of the day, these guys are now spotlighted on a pay-per-view. Both guys have big power. Both guys coming off losses. Uh, I think Adams has a really nice jab, really nice hook. Diverse to me. For a heavyweight, he he is diverse with his shots. Uh, I think when you look at Justin Taffa, this guy's more just that pure power guy. He needs to find that range uh, he has a good uppercut, I'll give him that, but, you know, unless you're going to fight in the pocket, I don't think it's going to matter much, and I think, to me, when I look at a fight like this, a lot of heavyweight fights come out this way, They can, it's a coin flip in some cases, uh, I look for the more assistant, uh, the more consistent attack, I think that's going to be Juan Adams, and I think, you know what, I think he's got some extra motivation, uh, we were a lot of people in the community hard on Greg Hardy, and the people that lost to Greg Hardy, and, and now we've seen... I guess, some stabilization to Greg Hardy's name. And I think the people that lost to him were probably unfairly criticized for being poor when they weren't. And I think that's really going to help push him into a situation where, you know, he has to kind of grow out of that shadow to a degree. And I'll look for Juan Adams to get the win. Two big factors in this fight. No, number one, Juan Adams is six foot five to Justin Toff is six foot. All right. So there's a height and a reach advantage. Also, beyond the the tactical side of losing to Greg Hardy and losing to him early, remember, he talked a lot of trash going into that fight. Remember, he said, oh, I got texts from his ex or whatever. She's encouraging me, and I'm going to beat this guy's ass. And what happens? He gets knocked out in 45 seconds. Two losses back-to-back -back in the UFC. But he has more UFC time. This is his fourth fight in the UFC. He has one win, so he's he's he's, he's one and two, but just more minutes in the UFC. I think that means something. Also, the last fight against Greg Hardy, you put everything behind a fight like that and you lose and you lose quickly. It makes or makes you or breaks you. It really does. You either find your footing as a fighter and decide to move forward and, boy, I'm going to prove everybody wrong, or it kind of breaks you. I'm betting it makes him stronger. Just like you did. I think this focuses him. I think we see the best Juan Adams we've seen so far in the octagon. And against uh, Justin Taffa, who's a step forward and throw kind of guy, coming off a knockout loss of his own, less experienced all around, right? Fewer fights, fewer fights in the UFC. I think Juan Adams is looking at someone he can beat, and that's exactly what he's going to do. I think he's going to walk in motivated. I'm going to see a good version of Juan Adams in this. And I think one of the reasons on the main card is it's just a banger. 
remember two title fights back to back. And I, I've I've made comments about production that, that people don't know and all this stuff. Number one, you have a women's fight at 125 that we will talk about in a minute. And even though it's it's something of a mismatch and that I believe um, Shevchenko is a level better than just about everybody, there's a good chance it goes the distance. John Jones in his last couple fights has fought somewhat conservatively. There's a good chance it goes the distance. The UFC doesn't want a fight going the distance leading into those two fights. So the placement of this fight is, hey, let's put a banger right before the two title fights. Uh, it'll be quick. Uh, it'll save us some time on the broadcast, and it'll get the crowd excited right before we lead into the title fight. So the reason for that is is strategic. Well, so much for us disagreeing going forward. So uh, Valentina Shevchenko, Caitlin <laughs> Jakugian, I swear. Caitlin, we try, uh, folks. We try. We really do try, but we just happen to agree on a lot of stuff. Yeah, it happens. Great minds think alike, I think, is the phrase we're looking oh, for. Oh, that's what it is. That is exactly it. Caitlin off uh, impressive back-to-back -back wins following her loss to Jessica I, who literally died fighting Shevchenko. Uh, it, you know, I, I think when you look at her, and, and you kind of said it, a, a lot of people are writing her off. But look, uh, you know, very good with her range, tall for the class, solid knees. She she fights very classically. She's got a really good job behind her. She sets up a good body kick. I think her ground game is underrated. I really think her best option would be to maybe rely on the ground game, although Shevchenko has gotten better on the ground. I still don't think it's like her comfort zone. I think the the change here that I see is that Caitlin Jakugian is kind of really good at kind of controlling space. And if she can do that, if she can kind of make sure that she's not susceptible to those spinning attacks, and that's just a more conventional fight, I think she's going to be okay. Valentina does a great job as well, though, you know, behind her jab, mixes in the body kicks. I think the speed is going to be the determining factor in ultimately Shevchenko winning. I mean, a lot of Caitlin's success has came from shorter fighters that just had an issue with that distance and let her dictate it. Valentina has that speed to get in and out of that range, and I don't think Caitlin's going to be prepared for that. I do see, though, as you kind of alluded to, I do see this going a full five rounds. I think this is going to be a decision, and I think a lot of people that maybe wrote Caitlin off or don't fully understand you know, who she is or what she's about, I think they're going to have a much clearer impression that she is a very good fighter. It's just right now, unless your name is Amanda Nunes, you are not going to be beating uh, Shevchenko. It's just not going to happen. I think that's kind of the heart of the problem. GDR, a good fighter. Nunez is a great fighter. I think with the same thing in Nunez's last title defense. You know, GDR made a good accounting herself, did everything she could. It wasn't a blowout, you know, like it you know, wasn't a massacre. Same thing here. I just think I, I, everything you said about Chukagin is 100% correct. She's just a level below Valentina Shevchenko. Another factor here, there's almost always at the elite level, and by that I mean generally – you know, main card UFC, main card big Bellator card, something like that. There's hardly ever a fight where I can't see a path to victory for one fighter. You know, I mean, it would be tough. It'd be difficult. You have to walk a fine line. It'd be very hard. But there's almost always a way a fighter can win. Chukagian has three finishes in 13 wins. She hasn't had a finish in four years. Okay. So the, she, the, the, her path to victory is by decision. I don't see the gifts you're talking about with Chukagian, her skill set, whatever, lasting for five five-minute rounds against Shevchenko. She's not going to finish Shevchenko. She's not going to catch her in something. She's not going to, you know, finish her on the ground or, or clip her on the feet unless, you know, some miracle shot. She'd have to outwork and out-hustle the best 125-pounder female in the world for 25 minutes. I just don't see that happening. If she had a great finishing ability in some area, sure, that it might happen. But I, I, I don't see someone who generally wins by decision decisioning Shevchenko. Shevchenko has too many weapons. She'll find a way in at some point. And so that's part of it to me is I don't see her having the finishing ability to catch the champ, to really, uh, you know, uh, make a statement in, in in five five minute rounds, I don't see that happening. So the idea that she can somehow outwork Shevchenko that long and win decision, I, I don't see it. Moving to the main event, as you kind of stated before, Dominic Reyes and John Jones. You know, Dominic Reyes, as you mentioned, 
with the win over Chris Weidman, put himself in this position. We're really, at least at light heavy, in a position where it's kind of John Jones versus all comers. You don't really have that ladder structure. Uh, Volkan Ustermir kind of seems to be the gatekeeper for the perennial contender that will come up. But this is, you know, Adamic Reyes coming in 12 and 0, you know, maybe a little under the radar to a casual fight fan, but great power, solid kicks. Uh, it has a really nice left hook and left kick. I don't know how they would factor into this, but I think when you look at how Dominic Reyes can win this fight, a lot of times when we talk about John Jones, it's how can he lose, right? I think it's early volume, you know. If you look, especially what happened with Weidman, you know, it's Reyes' ability to really put pressure on that can end a fight with just one single punch. Now, to that point, John Jones has shown an incredible defense. I actually see him doing a great job at catching Reyes' kicks and kind of turning him down to the mat and getting this on the ground. That's one of the things he's always done with someone who comes in with that kind of ground or that kind of like kicking diversity. And and that's going to probably factor into this because John Jones is also shown to be extremely adaptive. He will use his elbows. He'll use his knees, sometimes illegally, as we've seen. And he can really turn this fight into a problem for Reyes, whether he gets him on the mat or he gets him up against the cage. You know, John is really in a position right now to win every single fight until we see something where he's going to get exposed. You know, the Tiago fight, I hear people talking about, oh, that was the big, you know, exposure. That was the that was the close fight. Before that, it was the OSP fight where, you know, oh, he just looked weak. Listen, th these might not be his best performances, but we all don't have our best days. He's not failing. So I, I think, obviously, he's going to have to overcome Reyes' early onslaught to win this fight. John Jones is also expecting that's how Reyes is going to come out. And I think he's going to be really prepared for it. I just don't see anything Dominic Reyes does different than any other competitor John Jones has fought. And I don't see how this is going to be any different other than just another typical John Jones retains a belt and then people look for holes to argue why he's not that good. If you pick against John Jones, you're saying he's not in his prime anymore. Because to your point, Dominic Reyes doesn't bring anything, in my opinion, John Jones hasn't seen before. He's young. He's undefeated. He's tough. He's a powerful puncher. He's very explosive. Uh, Size-wise, he's about as big as John Jones. Doesn't quite have the reach, but no one does. You're betting John Jones is not the fighter he once was. Now, I understand how looking back at the Tiago Santos fight, you might think that. I understand maybe looking at the Anthony Smith fight, you might think that. We're not seeing a lot of the explosiveness, the crazy spinning attacks we used to see. We're not seeing as much of the versatility. We're seeing a very safe fighter in John Jones with this, you know, third generation of light heavyweights that he's wiping off the map. He's fighting a lot smarter. We're not seeing him take the risks he used to take when he was a young man. In fight years, by the way. Um, I got that a lot when I was like, yeah, you know, John Jones has been through life. Oh, he's only... 30 years old, right? It's like, yeah, but it's we're not talking regular. He doesn't work at a gas station, all right? It's not not regular years, okay? It, it doesn't quite, he's 32, but it's not 32 in regular human years. Those are fight years. So anyway, I understand after the Thiago Santos fight, people thinking maybe he's lost a step. I went back and forth on this pick. The One of the final things that, that made me go with John Jones is Dominic Reyes might not be the guy generally John Jones gets up for. And he was very honest about not really getting up for the Santos fight. This, this once again, the third generation of light heavyweights he's wiping out. What gets you up in the morning if you're John Jones? You've already fought. His legacy secure. He's the greatest light heavyweight of all time. Whether or not you make him the pound for pound best of all time is a matter of choice and has to do with how you see his, obviously his, his performance enhancing drug issues, stuff like that. Um, but... He's certainly the greatest light heavyweight of all time. The fact that he really wants Stipe and he really wants Israel Adesanya, which would normally be a negative because I don't like it when fighters talk about who they're fighting next and that they're not focused on this guy. I really think he's going to get up for this fight because he wants to make a statement that he deserves a double champ fight, that he wants to fight Israel Adesanya in Australia. He has to audition in a sense. If he doesn't do well or just you know squeaks by against, against uh, Dominic Reyes in a, in a way like he did against Thiago Santos, People might not be as excited for him to fight Stipe. If he blows Dominic Reyes out in the first round or something like that, people will be lining up for that fight. Oh, my God. He's, he's, he looks great. He's at his peak. He looks amazing. Can he win it all at heavyweight? 
that would be a very, very interesting fight. So I think John Jones is really motivated for this one. And I think he shows up a hundred percent and, and has a great performance because I think he needs one. And when you're chasing greatness, I think that brings the best out of John Jones. Yeah, I think the interesting thing is, and you kind of touched on it there, it's almost like greatness has become boring to a degree with John Jones. Yeah, yeah. That's how it feels, doesn't it? Like, ho-hum, I'm just wiping out another light heavyweight. And and when you think of how many Hall of Famers he's taken out, most of them were early. You know, and now he's taking on this this new generation of two fighters who don't have the cachet, who don't have the, oh, they were former champions. All the former champions are done. He wiped them all out. So none of these guys right now are legends, okay? John Jones has already beaten all the legends he's going to beat right now. Obviously, we don't know what they're going to do with the rest of their careers. But um, it's a matter of what motivates him. And I think these these future fights, these last two, maybe three legacy fights he has come up really motivate John Jones. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's almost to the point where you feel like we're we're almost – to if, if there wasn't all the things outside of, of MMA, right? We're almost to a GSP level of domination where he's literally wiped the division out twice. And then there's no real concept to think that he couldn't go do it again. I mean, the only the only fights that people really do question, obviously, you know, the Cormier with the, the overturning of the fight, but I'm pretty sure that was a convincing win. <laughs> the OSP fight, which, you know, could have been an anomaly for all we know. He really, even, you know, when it comes down to Gustafson, you know, the second fight, people gave that a lot of credence of, oh, you know, this is the time Gaskin have his number. He didn't, you know? So I, I think a lot of times when people pick against John Jones, I feel like they're less concerned about, is John Jones really in a fight that he's going to lose? Or do they just want to be the person that says, yep, I told you so. I told you yeah. that that was the guy. I told you it was going to be Dominic Reyes. Nobody believed me. Listen. The, the list is long of people that come in and say, I'm going to beat John Jones. I'm different. I'm the next guy. This is the skill set I have. And they all come in, for that matter, with great skill sets, with great game plans, most of them with great coaching and years of experience. And for some reason, it just doesn't pan out. And at some point, even if you go back and look at the Chicago fights, oh, it was a split decision. Could have been seen another way. Yeah, you're right. Maybe it could have. But it wasn't. He still won the fight. You want to see that fight get ran back? Yeah, sure. Maybe if Tiago stayed 100, percent it would be different. But listen, it doesn't matter what could have been; it's what is. And right now, this guy has put on years and years and years of dominant performances against the who's who and the who's next. And when it comes down to it, he gets his hand raised, and that's all there is to it. The last fighter I thought who would give him a problem tactically, stylistically, was DC in the rematch. Coming off the OSP fight, where John Jones didn't look great, uh, DC had done great things at 205. It seemed like this was his prime. This was his time, and he got knocked out. And I know it got overturned and all those things. You can't deny. To me, that was, okay, the only thing that's going to be John Jones is father time. And he's undefeated. Happens to everybody eventually. But I, as soon as he beat DC, as soon as DC hit the ground, I went, that's it. John Jones will never lose in his prime. Age will have to get him. Camps will have to get him. Injuries will have to catch up with him. Something other than this, some fighter just is better than him will have to catch up to him. Now, it may be Dominic Reyes. And I said, if I'm wrong about John Jones winning this fight, we're going to find out. I'm going to be horribly wrong because Reyes is going to come out in the first round. Uh, John Jones won't be his normal self and will get blasted. I really believe that. If, if, if the wheels come off, they all they come off quickly. If not, it's just going to be – even if that happens, it'll just be, well, you know, John Jones got too old. Had too many fights, too many camps, too many nagging, ten, nagging injuries caught up with him. And Dominic, Dominic Chris happened to be the guy who was there who got the call at that time. I don't think skill-wise, style-wise, technique-wise, anybody beats him. Yeah, no, I agree. I think John Jones honestly kind of beats himself before someone else beats him. Yeah, and to me, exactly. What's always stood out is, you know, the list of competitors, at least further back, that never wanted it again. You know, Chael Sonnen has went out famously on record and said, listen, I fought him. I didn't want him again when it was over. Rashad Evans, Leo Machida, Quentin Jackson, Ryan Bader. These aren't guys that claim, you know, that sat there and clamored over and over again for John Jones rematches. And, you know, you might see it now because, like you said, you know, it's just getting to the point where at some point, listen, somebody's going to knock him off the throne. 
when, you know, as you said, when the wheels fall off, in my opinion, they're all going to fall off at once, and it's going to be the end. But that person, whoever it will be, and if it even happens, is not going to just overtake the legacy of John Jones for the good in the cage or the bad outside the cage. You know, he's just done way too much, and we don't see greatness like this come along all that often. And like you said, the the the, the factor ultimately becomes it's it's kind of becoming stale to watch. So I, I almost want to see something that inspires him, you know, to take on Israel, to take on someone else. You know, Stipe would be a great option. You know, you almost want to see, like, one more super fight to a degree where there's just two massive names to just get it over with. And then, you know, let's move on and let somebody else, you know, maybe have a back and forth in the division. Because, listen, John Jones is champion. It's it's kind of getting old. But at the same time, you know, you have to embrace. We're seeing history every time he fights. And we're not just seeing, you know, you compared him a little bit to GSP. The difference between him and GSP is GSP tended to play it safe and win by decision. This guy has some spectacular finishes over some of the best names of all time. Really incredible stuff. And I think he gets past Reyes. After that, we'll see. It depends, you know, on how he looks against Reyes and everything. But um, that motivation for some, uh, for chances to kind of eclipse, let's face it, DC's legacy, which is what he's about. If he can become a champ at heavyweight, he, for him to be like, ha ha, I beat Stipe, that would mean a lot to him. And I think he gets up for that fight in a big way. And to me, you know, you just don't often see, and you know, I know a lot of people probably, you know, balk at a comparison. I'm not comparing John Jones to GSP as far as you know, talent, skill set, personality. I'm comparing to what they've done. I mean, very few right, times do you right. see a fighter enter enter a division, say, okay, I'm going to take on everybody this division has, and anybody that gives me a problem, I'll see you twice, and I'm going to win more often than not every time I go out there. It just doesn't happen in this sport. Somebody ultimately gets clipped. They taint their legacy. And trust me, John Jones has tried very hard to taint his legacy. But as far as in-ring performances, he's got about as flawless as a resume as you're going to find. Yeah. And and it it could be that Reyes is the guy at the time to just catch him while he's on his way down. But I just haven't seen enough evidence of that to pick against John Jones yet. Yeah, I agree. I, I In a way, it, just even talking about this, I, I hate that we have this discussion because essentially we're downplaying the person that beats him before they beat him. And that's not an envious position to be in. I mean, sure, you know, everybody wants to be that guy that beat John Jones, but at the same time, the first time you do it, you know, there's going to be people that sit there like you and I and and probably a majority of the media that will sit there and say, yeah, well, how many how many fights did John Jones go through? How many legends did he actually have to take on? I mean, there, there's he's got about as complete resume as you can get. And, and just to go back, because I know people in the comment section will love to sit there and bring up the Matt Hamill fight. I, I'm firmly convinced, OK, whoever was going to fight Matt Hamill at some point was going to run into that problem just because of his disability. And to me, it's even more credible for Matt Hamill to have went in there with that type of. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to say disadvantage, but certainly what he elected to go in there is is actually never brought up in the same light that you talk about with Michael Bisman going in there with one eye, right? But it, it's very true. Anybody was going to to run in that position with him. As far as the drug tests, listen, at this point, they are what they are. It's been three years. Pico Graham or not, I'm ready to let bygones be bygones and just watch this guy be great. Yeah. I mean, we, we can't help but... <sighs> kind of downplay whoever beats him because to me it's how you did in your prime who you beat how many of you beat them and how you beat them when you look at that just nobody reigns forever nobody has what john jones had in his career which is a decade of dominance over the best names in the sport you know finishing them more often than not in spectacular ways it, it just doesn't last forever and that's just it is the way it is. No one beat Floyd Mayweather in his prime. If he loses now, if he, you know, for some reason took on Errol Spence Jr., which he would never do in a million years. But let's say he did and he lost. Okay. He just got too old to be great still. Time catches up to everybody. And that's not an insult to his next opponent. It's just a natural fact at this point. You know who else time has caught up to, Jimmy? Us, I would say. You're absolutely correct. Time has caught up to us. <laughs> 
We appreciate you guys checking this out, and we will be back very shortly with more commentary.